Do you have Parquet files that you want to be able to visualize more easily? Or perhaps your Parquet files are really large and your normal methods for viewing them, you can't actually do it because it breaks. I'm Amanda Martin with Deephaven, and I'm going to show you one of the quick and easy ways to visualize Parquet data. Okay, let's get started. First, you need to have Deephaven installed on your computer. It's a really quick and easy process. Go to Google, type in Deephaven Quick Start, and that loads our quick start guide. You need to make sure that you have Docker and Docker Compose installed on your computer, whether you're on Linux, Mac, or Windows. Docker and Docker Compose work really well. Next, you choose your deployment. I like to use Python with examples, but it's really up to you. You can also use Groovy without examples, but in this video, I'm going to assume that you're using Python because we're going to compare it to some pandas later on. Okay, you need to curl the Docker Compose file these commands, and then we need to actually pull the files. Now I already did the Docker Compose, so I have it, but now I'm pulling them, and then I want to launch the deployment with my Docker Compose up. Detach mode is that minus D. Now Deephaven is up and running. Hmm. How do I get there? I scroll down a little bit. They have some good practices for using Docker, but you can see to get to Deephaven locally, we go to our browser and go to localhost 10,000 forward slash IDE. Deephaven is up and running. Okay, so now let's get to the meat of it. We want to visualize some of those Parquet files. So when we launch Deephaven, we have this kind of directory structure. We have the Docker Compose, and then we have a data directory. This data directory is accessible to any of the, the Docker inside Deephaven. So if I click on it, you'll see that I have examples. It has a whole bunch of CSV and Parquet files to play around with. And we have this directory here, Parquet. This directory I put in there extra just now um, before the video because it's about 30 gigs and I didn't want you to wait. Open that up and you see I have a whole bunch of Parquet files that you can test out. Um, if you want this directory, let me know where, let me know on Gitter and I can send you the, the link for where it is and whatnot. Inside the Parquet directory, I have even another directory. This is PIMS data which has a whole bunch of Parquet files that are split up into parts, which make it a little bit more manageable. Okay, so that is the overall setup. So let's see, first off, something really, really big. Um, I have a file in this directory that is 26 gigs. You can see right here, it is called complete.parquet. Now, some of the normal ways that we would read this file is with um, with Parquet tools. And so I have Parquet tools installed. And here I'm going to launch Parquet tools. And it takes a little bit on this 26 gig file. Another tool that I've normally used to view uh, Parquet data before Deephaven was pandas in Python. So I'm going to open up Python. And then I want to import pandas. And they do a pretty good job with Parquet files. There you can see Mr. Parquet finally was able to parse through the 26 gigs. So now let's look at pandas. We imported it, and now we want to read the Parquet file. Okay, let's go in and chug it along. Pandas is trying to read that 26 gig Parquet file. Takes a little bit. Now let's go to Deephaven, and let's see what Deephaven can do with this file. Here is my read table and my import. And Pandas is still working in the background, so my computer might not be too happy with this. Um, but normally it takes about 10 seconds for that 26 gigs. You see that it did nine right there. Lo and behold, we have read a 26 gig Parquet file in Deephaven. Pandas is still working. And look, there is all of our data. Wow. So in looking at this data, I can scroll through it. There's a big, huge scroll over here on the right. Let's go to the bottom. Bottom still there. We have 367 million rows. Wow, that's a lot of rows. So you can see that we can read a big file perfectly well. Okay, I had to force quit on that Python um, because, well, it didn't work. So next, I want to load in a different type of data. For example, let's say we have a gzip parquet file. Uh, this is a different type of compression codec. 
if I give it to Parquet Tools, we can see that it works just fine. Um, let's try Pandas. We import our Pandas yet again because I had to kill it last time. And we're going to read it and view it. There you can see it viewed it just fine. That's pretty awesome. Okay. And Deephaven, of course, we work with generally most of the compression codecs as well. So let's type it in. And we can see that, just like before, it loads no problem. Okay. And we have all the grouping and whatnot. And this is a lot more easy to see than in the pandas data frame. So one more kind of cool thing is we can do entire directory structures. Here in my Parquet tool, I'm supplying it with an entire directory of PIMS data rather than just a Parquet file. And you can see that it didn't have a single problem with that. Pandas, we could supply it the whole directory. Again, this is a directory of Parquet files. Important that they have the same schema and things like that. And then in Deephaven, we can do the same exact thing. But now we have a really wonderful IDE, IDE to kind of play around with the data and visualize the data. So while it's loading the data, and right now it's stitching together, there's about 250 files inside five different directories. We can also filter the data. Give it a minute. There's, uh, there's almost 4 million rows of data unfiltered. And then when we filter it, close this one up. I have my Docker memory limit a little low, so it might be hitting that. You can see now that it's filtered, it's only 1 million. And then, of course, if you want, you can sort on the GUI, you can plot, you can kind of do whatever you want with normal data science, all thanks to Deephaven. Okay, so that's how to visualize data. Uh, parquet data with Deephaven, even if it's really, really big, like those 26 gigs. If you need any help or guidance with this, hit me up on Gitter. Thanks.